While Google Chrome is a great browser for those of you that want to use something basic without too many features, there are some settings that should be changed to give you a better experience. So coming up, I'll show you the settings you should change right now in Chrome to make your experience using it even better. Let's get started. While there are some browsers like Brave, Safari, and Firefox that by default block those nasty third-party cookies that track and follow your web activity as you go from site to site, Chrome still does not do this by default. So here's how to block them in Chrome. In the upper right, click the three-dot menu icon and select Settings. In the left pane, go to Privacy and Security. Here on the right, click on Third-Party Cookies. Then select the option to block third-party cookies. After you select it, it'll give you some propaganda to make you go back to allowing third-party cookies. And it says that features on some sites may not work. I rarely ran into this issue. And as I mentioned in a recent video about Microsoft Edge, these are not features you would want anyways. So let's move on. On a side note, you'll notice a setting in advanced to send a do not track request with your browsing traffic. This one is quite useless since most websites ignore these requests. So having it on or off doesn't make much of a difference, but if it makes you feel better, turn it on. If you can't stand those annoying pop-ups that appear when you land on a web page, you'll want to enable the setting to block pop-ups. Staying in Privacy and Security, click on Site Settings here at the bottom. Scroll down. In Content, select Pop-ups and Redirects. Then in default behavior, select don't allow sites to send pop-ups or use redirects. This setting will also stop websites that will redirect you from one URL to another without your permission. Google has a new real-time AI feature to protect you from dangerous websites, even ones Google didn't know about before. It can even warn you about potentially dangerous extensions and suspicious downloads. For added protection, I highly recommend enabling it. So in Privacy and Security, go to Security. The default is Standard Protection. For added security, select Enhanced Protection. We'll stay here in Security for the next one. If you don't want your internet service provider or government agency to know which websites you're visiting, you should enable the setting to enable Use Secure DNS. To enable it, scroll down. In Advanced, click the toggle to turn on Use Secure DNS. DNS stands for Domain Name System. What it does is it translates human readable names, like Facebook.com, into numerical IP addresses that computers use to communicate. Having this enabled will encrypt all DNS queries. Next, select a DNS provider. On this Windows computer, I've already configured this in Windows Settings. If you've already done that, select OS Default. Otherwise, select one of the others listed. I recommend OpenDNS. I'll leave it here on OS default. Just above Use Secure DNS, I recommend enabling warn you if a password was compromised in a data breach. This is just one of those common sense things. Your passwords and usernames are encrypted when doing this, so you're good to go. For this one, I've gone into one of my other Chrome profiles. And when you do this, you'll need to be logged into your account and go to myactivity.google.com slash activity controls. The link to this will be in the description as well. Google, in an effort to make them appear like they're a privacy respecting company, has added controls that give you more control of how they use your data. In web and app activity, I recommend leaving this one turned on. While you do give up some privacy here, having it on does make your experience better using Google services. Instead, let's scroll down to auto delete and select choose an auto delete option. Of course, we don't want to leave it on the default. Don't auto delete activity. An auto delete activity older than the shortest option is three months. So choose that one. Then click on next. Then click on confirm. And it'll let you know that your activity older than three months is being permanently deleted from your account and no longer tied to you. Select got it. If you don't like the appearance of Chrome and want to give it a new look, a great way to do this is to change the theme. Click on the three dot menu in the upper right, hover your cursor over extensions and select visit Chrome Web Store. Then in the upper left, select themes. 
They have various categories here on the left, and they have tons of themes to choose from. To install a theme, click on it. Then on the theme store page, select Add to Chrome. If you don't like the theme, you can select Undo or click on the X here on the right. Now this is what the theme fully looks like when you open Chrome or open a new tab. If you don't want Chrome to continue running apps powered by Chrome when you close it out, you'll need to turn off a setting. In Settings, in the left pane, select System. If turned on, click the toggle to turn off continue running background apps when Google Chrome is closed. The setting under it, when enabled, will use your computer's GPU to handle graphics-intensive tasks, potentially improving performance and freeing up CPU resources. If you find Chrome has performance issues on your computer, try turning this on to see if it helps. Another setting here, I disable, is show system notifications about Chrome features and tips. This one's a matter of personal preference. When using Chrome, you're not being forced to use Google's search engine. You do have other choices, to change it in settings, select search engine, then click on change. The other choices here are Microsoft Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, and the Russian search engine Yandex. DuckDuckGo is the most privacy focused of these. They don't track or store your web browsing activity. Select your search engine and then click on set as default. If you've used incognito mode for a more private browsing experience than you already know by default, Chrome does not allow extensions in incognito to keep tracking of your activity to a minimum. But if you have an extension you can't live without in incognito mode, here's how to enable it. In the toolbar, click the extensions icon, then select manage extensions. For the extension you need, click on details. Go to allow in incognito, click the toggle to enable it. And that's it. If you're the type of person that keeps a lot of bookmarks, this tip is for you. On my work profile, I have nearly 30 to 40 bookmarks taking up space on the bookmarks bar. On this profile, there's only six. To save space, if you already recognize the icon and where it leads to, right click on bookmark, select edit, delete the name. It'll automatically be highlighted, so just hit delete on your keyboard. Then click on save. Jumping ahead, I did this for all six bookmarks here, and now there's more real estate on the bookmarks bar. As you may have heard, Chrome finally has a reading mode, which strips away the ads and other clutter, making articles easier to read. To use it, right-click anywhere in the article and select Open in Reading Mode. You can left-click the edge and drag it more to the left if you want. There are settings here you can change to make it better for you. There's various fonts to choose from. You can make the text smaller or bigger. The links can be disabled. There's various color themes. The line height can be changed. And you can change the letter spacing. Live caption is a great feature in Chrome for those of you that are hard of hearing or whenever possible like to have captions turned on when audio is playing in Chrome. For example, this could be on YouTube, Spotify, or anything else that plays audio. To enable it in Settings, select Accessibility in the left pane. Click the toggle to turn on Live Caption. With this enabled, with any site playing audio, Chrome will generate captions on your screen. The default language is English, and you can add languages. There's a toggle here for people that are easily offended that will hide profanity. Enabling Live Translate can translate the live captions to the language of your choice. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful for you, give it a thumbs up and share it with others. What settings have you changed in Google Chrome to make your experience better for you? Let us know in the comments. And if you're new to our channel, subscribe and click the bell to not miss out on our latest tutorials and other tech-related stuff here on Brett in Tech.